Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. In Islam, charity is very important. It's part of faith for all of us. And Allah has mentioned this very clearly in many of his verses throughout the Quran. It is so important that uh, Allah also connects charity to prayer most of the time. So whenever there is a uh, verse about, a statement about prayer, Allah is associating that with uh, charity as such that prayer is incomplete without charity and charity is incomplete without the prayer. In chapter 2, uh, Al-Baqarah, verse 277, Allah says that those who establish regular prayer and regular charity will have their reward with their Lord. That's how it starts uh, mentioning uh, goodness and the value of charity throughout the Quran. And he also says that those people uh, do not have to fear for anything and they will not grieve. They will not be disappointed when they reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hereafter during the judgment day. Allah will take care of it. As we all know that uh, Allah in another verse has also mentioned that if we give charity, it's like giving loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is going to repay that in a much better manner. Let's also see what kind of uh, charity is preferred by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this verse. In same chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 274, Allah says that those who spend uh, from their possessions in charity by night and day and in secret and in public, they will have a reward from their Lord and again repeats the same thing by they do not have to fear and they, know they do not have to grieve for anything in hereafter. So the message here is, one is something that you have to keep spending on charity. Allah is encouraging uh, very constantly to help needy, help poor, help your neighbors, help your uh, friends, relatives, committee, whoever is in need. Just go out and ask them for help and keep uh, doing charity. Uh, he's also saying in this verse, he begins by saying in night and in day and he also says in secret and in public. So when he says uh, night and secret in, in the first followed by day and public, that also means that the most preferred way of charity is when you do something hidden. Uh, you do not have to show it off. You do not have to reveal it in the public. But in sometimes if you are doing in the public, uh, it's also good for people to know that you are doing charity and they also get encouraged about it. So it is also uh, welcome to do so. There is another verse, uh, same chapter, verse 280, where Allah is taking charity to a next level. We all know that like we're giving a charity is like giving a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we give a loan to a human and for some reason that person is not able to return back that loan to, loan to uh, us, Allah is recommending to convert that loan to a charity. He's saying that just forget about the loan. If you can, please forgive the person and consider that you have done a charity to that person. And when you do that as charity, you are like giving a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that means Allah is going to take care of that piece uh, uh, and he is going to reward you when, when you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now let's see uh, what kind of message Allah shares when he associates charity with a test for humanity. In chapter uh, 3 al Imran verse 92, Allah says that you will not be a righteous uh, person or you will not attain righteousness unless you give in charity from what you love. So sometimes what we do is we try to do charity with unwanted stuff. We, we might have so many things in our home uh, which we don't need it. So what we do is we try to remove them or throw them out of the home and we instead of throwing them in the garbage we try to do and give them for some charity so the other person might get benefit out of it it is still fine as long as some somebody is making use of it but Allah is saying the best of you or if you want to attain righteousness you have to give in charity something that you love so all the best way of charity is doing something that you possess something that you own or of equal quality or if equal worth if even if you buy something for this, imagine in a way that you are buying for your own family, you are buying for yourself, how you would like to treat yourself. That is the way Allah recommends to treat other needy people uh, and consider charity uh, in that way. So that uh, when you expect that thing back from Allah, Allah will also do that back to you in, in, in a form of love. Uh, now let's also see some of the verses which are Allah, which where Allah is trying to get more serious about it and also guiding what should we do and what we should not do 
and what kind of punishment is associated with it when you are not taking charity very seriously. In chapter 4, uh, uh, in Nisa, and verse number 37, Allah says, those who are tight-fisted, uh, meaning that somebody who is not uh, open for spending money, open for spending and helping needy and poor people with the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has been given to him. He says that those who, those who are tight-fisted, and those who preach others to be tight-fisted. It can be a direct preaching or you can encouraging others by just uh, doing this in front of them and they get inspired by you. In any way, if you preach others to be a miser person like yourself and you are withholding Allah's bounty with you by not giving it to the needy people, Allah is calling themselves as unbelievers in this uh, verse. Even if you pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you pray fast, you know, five times daily you pray. But if, if you still are a miser person and you're not spending Allah's bounty in the right direction, so that it's not able to reach to the person of who's needy, who's really requiring that support, then Allah is addressing that person as an unbeliever. He also says that there is a very shameful punishment as waiting for uh, this person. Allah doesn't describe anything about more than that on what kind of shameful punishment is. We do not even want to know. May Allah protect all of us from this shameful punishment and we should not be part of that group. There is one more very serious uh, verse in, in the same chapter, verse 38, where Allah says that, okay, now he's talking about the people who are not uh, doing things for charity and holding Allah's bounty. There is another group of uh, people who are willing to spend, who are willing to do charity, but they are doing it just to show off. They are not doing out of... Uh, fear of Allah or love of Allah just because it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are doing it to show off to the public uh, to other humans that see how how great I am by by helping these people I have so much money I'm so wealthy I'm helping these people so they do it just to show off so to address these kind of people Allah says that these people are the companions of Satan and they do not believe in Allah and the last day. So we know that whenever Allah mentions, uh, if you, somebody is not believing in Allah and the last day, that's very serious. So it's a very important verse that we all should be again scared of. Uh, sometimes uh, we focus more on prayers and fasting um, and other good deeds, which Allah is obviously asking us to do, expecting us to do. We have to show our faith to Him. But there are so many important good deeds which we cannot neglect to do it. And charity stands on top of everything. Um, if if a person is not involved in charity, Allah is not going to accept him and then he's going to have a shameful punishment. If somebody is doing this for sure, then he's a, he's a companion of Satan. So we need to have balance in between. We need to have this intention in heart that we are doing this thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this right intention and right guidance in our heart. And inshallah, let's use this Ramadan to help others. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, take care. Assalamu alaikum.